Today, I'm going to show you how to whip the club into impact to create maximum acceleration, maximum distance. Make sure you check out this video. Well, I don't want that one back. So I'm starting today's video with a seven iron, but I'm gonna be discussing this and showing this with the irons and the driver, because it's the same move. We're gonna be talking about creating more whip at impact, more club head speed. And the first thing I'm gonna mention is gonna sound a bit bonkers, but we've gotta actually learn to decelerate our hands to be able to accelerate the club head. And that's what I was trying to demonstrate with that drill. I was hitting it hard, but trying to stop short. So I was trying to feel like I stopped by here. Now you'll have seen here, but I did not get all the way through to my full finish position. So it's a great exercise to go ahead and hit some hard shots, but try and stop as short as you can. There's a couple of reasons behind it, and it's not that geeky, it's not that scientific, but think of it this way, if you had a car with fantastic engine, but you had rubbish brakes, you will never be able to reach top speed because you know you can't then slow it down. So actually being able to have effective brakes means you can accelerate harder. And also the second part is we actually need our body to fire in the right sequence. So we know at the start of the downswing, it should be a ground up, right? Our legs first. So our legs would fire, then our core, then our chest, then our shoulder, elbow, hand, wrist, club in that order, the same way as it would be throwing a ball. You wouldn't get everything moving at the same speed. You'd get a part of the body fire and then slow down the next part, fire and slow down. The slowing down part helps the energy be been passed onto the next part. Now, if I asked you to throw a ball or a javelin, you wouldn't be consciously thinking about it. Well, that's where this exercise works quite well. I wasn't overthinking it. I was just trying to hit it hard and stop short. But actually that allowed me, I had to almost start to feel like I was decelerating my hands before I got to the golf ball to allow the club speed to whip at impact. So the energy was passed onto the golf club earlier. What we don't want is the energy being passed onto the golf club here because it's useless. The ball's been and gone. Let me just show you that drill one more time with an eye and I'll demonstrate it with the driver in a second. So hit hard, stop short. So it's a great exercise. I couldn't have hit two better shots straight down my line. And our golfers go, well, I, you can't reach max speed from there, but that's as far as I can hit one making a full movement through the golf ball. So I've flown those six, uh, seven irons, sorry, about 160 to hit them 168, 169 total distance. Um, speeds, ball speeds look pretty good to me. Club head speed looks pretty good. So I'm actually not losing out on a whole lot. Now I'm not suggesting that's where we have to be, but this is a great training method to start to feel like we can actually create maximum speed, maximum whip at impact, okay? So we're decelerating our handle to accelerate the club head. Now I just wanna to quickly touch on the couple of reasons why golfers may struggle to whip the golf club to create max speed at impact. One is that they tend to shift way too late in terms of their pressure. So if we're shifting our pressure too late, if we're waiting to here to start to get our pressure towards our lead foot, it's too late. Because the sequence of events would be that we're pushing down with our lower body, now we can start to push off the ground. Now as my hip is rising, my lead hip is rising into impact, my belt buckle going up, that again allows me space, time to really whip the golf club. Again, I'm starting to now push off the floor, decelerate, the energy is being passed in the correct sequence through to the golf club. So we've got to, I've got a fly trying to bother me, we're trying to get onto our lead side early before we actually finish our backswing. So the elite golfers tend to start to shift their pressure into their lead foot before they finish their backswing. Most golfers are waiting way too late. So we're trying to feel like we shift very early and then we're trying to really get that sensation that I am rising into impact, not staying down static. So when I'm doing that exercise, I'm trying to shift early 
and I'm trying to push off the floor. And again, it gave me that real feel of shifting, pushing into my lead foot, pushing off the floor. And I still got that sensation. I was trying to slow almost my hands down into impact, let the energy pass onto the golf club. So this is still true with a driver. If you watch a lot of the long drive guys, you'll see them training like this. So the science has been there for a while. It's not crazy stuff. We've got to learn to, as I said, decelerate to be able to accelerate. So same movement it is harder with a driver. And again, got that sensation of really pushing my pelvis up. And although the direction's a little left to target, still pretty good distance for me with that real feeling of, of stopping short, being able to decelerate my hands to whip the golf club into impact. Let's do one more with that. So good, pretty good ball speed, considering the strike didn't feel amazing. Very good club head speed. If I'd struck that better, I'd have got a lot more out of it. It was 108 mile an hour club head speed. So I'm happy with the speed. And it was just me trying to, again, feel like I stopped the hands a lot sooner to whip the golf club. Yes, I could do then some training exercise, trying to shift my pressure onto this lead foot. And I could do some working on my pelvis moving more up and forwards. I've even seen some of the long drive guys do a drill where and then they're working back. So they're trying to stop short and then actually go into the swing the wrong way round. And it's a little bit what um, one of the training aids out there, Super Speed, they recommend doing some left hand only swing or some backward swing. So if you're a right handed golfer, do some with your left hand again, getting used to accelerating and decelerating the other side of the body. So hit hard, stop short. Now that felt great. I just didn't stop as short as I wanted, but the club was still here somewhere and I normally get it all the way through. So it was still a shortened follow through. I think I could do more, but God, I hit that one good. I was actually really happy with the strike there. 266 carry. So I'm starting to really utilize a little bit more speed. I'm interested to see what the club had measured out if it picked it. 107, felt quicker than the last one. So I. 107, I had a 108, but they're, they're good club head speeds for me. I'm normally around the 104-ish mark. So I'm talking about generating three, four miles an hour more club head speed, which is the potential of five, six mile an hour more ball speed. One mile an hour of ball speed, all being equal, is about two and a half yards. So we've got to train. If you want to hit the ball further, you want to generate more speed, you've got to train that way. And this is one of those things allowing the club to reach maximum speed at impact. It might sound a little strange, feeling like you're gonna stop short, but it's a great way to really get that sensation. You could even do some of those drills if you had the option with a whippier shaft. So you could try and use something a little bit softer, a little bit lighter in practice to really get that sensation of creating some whip. I hope that helps create you some more club head speed. Definitely try it on the driving range before ever really taking those concepts, those feels perhaps to the golf course. If you enjoy the content, hit the thumbs up, share it with as many golfers as you can, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Right now, YouTube is suggesting the next video of mine that's relevant for you. It's just here, click on it and check it out.